Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe three and three quarter inch scale Kenner style action figures from Super 7. This here was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, and if you're a Masters of the Universe fan, you likely saw all the hype surrounding these before the convention. Um, Super 7 basically created this neat little exclusive for the convention, and they had this entire store set up in downtown San Diego called Skeletor's Lair. Um, you probably saw everything about it, where you actually had to go pick up one of these really cool little Skeletokens tokens from the Mattel booth or the Super 7 booth on the show floor, and then you would take this to Super 7's Skeletor's Lair store in downtown San Diego, where you can then buy this guy right here. Um, the token's a pretty neat little souvenir that they did let us keep, so I really like this. It's just a really lightweight coin. actually kind of feels like one of those like uh, party favor kind of coins, so it's real lightweight. But it's still a neat little souvenir. It says Skeletoken Admit 1. Um, really neat little token here. Um, so this allowed you to get into the Super 7 store, which was crazy busy, by the way. And Super 7 had a ton of Masters of the Universe exclusives, which we're going to take a look at a few of them. But we're going to start with this one here, which was their primary exclusive, which is this Stage 1 prototype set of a collection of action figures done in the retro Kenner style. Now, the idea behind this is sort of a what-if scenario. Uh, if you are a longtime fan of Masters of the Universe, you might already know that the roots of the line kind of stem from the fact that Mattel originally passed on the Star Wars license, uh, which wound up with Kenner, and then that became a massive success. So Mattel ended up trying to come up with a new line of their own to become the next big thing, which they eventually did with Masters of the Universe. Now, the original Masters of the Universe line was completely different from the Kenner Star Wars line because Mattel purposely made them large and chunky, muscular, 5-inch scale figures. But what Super 7 did here is kind of create this what-if when Mattel was conceptualizing Masters of the Universe, they started out with the idea of making them as... Kenner style three and three quarter inch action figures. So this isn't really what Mattel did, but it's kind of a fun what if scenario. The box that they created here looks just like those vintage shipping boxes that you would get for mailing away maybe for some prototypes or some concept figures. Think maybe Star Wars early bird. I think Mattel even did um, a Flash Gordon mail away that came in a box similar to this. So Super 7 really did some amazing stuff here in making this feel as um, very vintage and very realistic as possible. We got these cool line images on the front of He-Man, Skeletor, Merman, and Beastman. And there's even a fake shipping label stamped right over this. It's an actual sticker right over the artwork, just like the mail would actually do. Um, and it says Los Angeles, 1982, December, uh, Mattel's, Mattel Boys products. It looks like it's an actual box that was shipped to Mattel. Um, it's crazy. It's so awesome. Um, the back of the box has a little description here for you. Capture all the mystery and excitement in the universe with the Masters of the Universe collection featuring the mighty He-Man, Guardian of Castle Grayskull, and the most powerful man in the universe. He-Man is locked in eternal battle with Skeletor, evil lord of darkness, and his villainous henchmen Merman and Beast Man. The Masters of the Universe collection establishes an all-new style of action figure, each heroically proportioned, fully posable, and sturdy plastic action figure comes with an action accessory for endless hours of play. So this is meant to look like the actual description of this proposed toy line. Really, really fun stuff. So let's go ahead and open up this cool shipper box so we can look at the fun things that are on the inside. So first of all, we do have our figures, and you can see they're on a tray, and we're going to take a closer look at these in just a bit, but there's some other things in here first. This is our bag of accessories for each of the figures. The other fun thing that they included is this neat little confidential, put that in quotes, confidential document, which is supposed to look like the kind of little description of what these characters are, as if they are... You know, kind of sending these along to be approved by the higher-ups in the company. Um, so we got the product name. This is C, Product Development Submission Form. Product name, Masters of the Universe Collection. You got the description here. Boys, action figures with accessories, strong fantasy, good versus evil themes. Expands on established industry standard scale, three and three quarter inch, of course, set by Star Wars. You got your parts list here. This is unpainted sculpture samples. Submission date, March 8th, 1980. Projected release date, holiday 1980. Um, and, and I love the comments down here. Great start. Concept and characters are testing well. 
fantasy element really connects with children and parents. Push form to be more distinct from competitors. Bigger, stronger, way more over the top. We want these toys to really pop off the shelf. Revise sculpts to reflect above. So that's supposed to be the notes telling them to basically change these are the five inch scale figures that we ended up with so fun little thing really uh, it looks very realistic it's something that would you would actually see back in mattel in the day so let's go ahead and get these guys out of the trays now and take a closer look at the included action figures all right so we've got our figures outside of the packaging this particular set includes he-man skeletor merman and beast man and as you can see they're all just molded in the color plastic that would be the overwhelming color on the figures and of course the rest of them would eventually end up being painted um so let's go and take a look at these guys individually to get a good look at them here i'll go ahead and move these guys off to the side and we will start things off with the most powerful man in the universe he-man so he's all done in this flesh tone color here. And you can see that the style of the figure is very much in that vintage three and three quarter inch scale. Uh, very much what you would see Kenner doing with the Star Wars line specifically. Um, but there were also so many three and three quarter inch figures in that era to all kind of compete with the Star Wars line. So this is the exact style it's in. Five points of articulation with the head being able to turn left and right, the arms moving up and down at the shoulders, and the legs moving forwards and backwards at the thighs. Um, they're very, very sturdy. Very good quality. I mean, the plastic feels great. Uh, these feel exactly as you would expect a full production three and three quarter inch figure to feel. So it's very nice. And the sculpts on them are actually very well done. One thing that is really cool about this, and part of the reason why the sculpts are so great, is that these figures were all sculpted by an ex Kenner employee who actually worked on the vintage Star Wars line. So, one of the guys that was responsible for sculpting those old Star Wars figures, those old vintage Kenner figures, sculpted these He Man figures here. So, it makes them feel like they very much fit in. Uh, they, they definitely feel like they come directly from that era. And it's really cool. I mean, you can still see all of those details like the harness there, um, the furry loincloth. We got the furry boots. And of course, He-Man does come with his power sword. I do like how it even does have the little uh, cross guard on there and everything. Um, just like the vintage one, which was, I believe, more kind of made so that it would, the old figure would hold it. Um, this figure, of course, grips onto it perfectly with his right hand. The left hand is more open there. Um, and so there you go. We got the He-Man he -Man there holding onto his power sword, all done in that flesh tone style. So that's going to bring us to his arch nemesis, Skeletor. Um, again, another awesome sculpt. I just love the way this guy looks. Um, he still very much looks like Skeletor. They're just, you know, a lot thinner. They're not as bulky and beefy as you would expect them to be, but all these great details are sculpted on, like the harness. Um, you know, got the same kind of loincloth. You got the monster feet on there. Um, you know, you got the, the cool, like, demon arms. He's got the Havoc staff, which looks very cool. Actually looks very much like the vintage uh, Mattel Havoc staff, just done in a thinner material, thinner style. And uh, Skeletor can hold that in either one of his hands there. And we can get him posed with his Havoc staff. That brings us to Merman. I uh, love it. I love the face on this guy. I mean, it's really cool because even though these are done in the Kenner style, they still very much have the elements of the vintage Masters of the Universe line. Uh, Merman here, especially. I mean, that looks like Merman, right? You can look at him. You can tell exactly who he is. He's got his sword there that you can hold in his right or left hand. He's got gripping hands on both. All of those great details that are right off the vintage figure, just done in that thinner three and three quarter inch style. And lastly, we've got Beast Man, um, who I really love. He's very, very good looking. Again, he, the head looks a lot like the vintage Mattel head. It's just done on this thinner body. Um, so that looks especially kind of funny with Beast Man, but I don't know. It still all works somehow. Um, you got the fur kind of sculpted down here on the legs and the feet. Again, done very much in the style that Mattel did it. Just done in this Kenner style. And he's even got his whip that's got an actual little nylon rope there. So the figures are very cool, I must say. Um, they're very, very different for He-Man. And obviously, that the thing that made He-Man stand out was the fact that they were these bulkier 5-inch scale figures. And obviously, that's what was the winning formula. But it's kind of fun to look back and kind of reimagine these in this style. And I think these were pulled off exceptionally well. 
I really like them exactly for what they are. They're supposed to be something fun and different and it's kind of neat and I know that fans of the retro Kenner style will especially appreciate these. I think they'll really get a kick out of them. But I think uh, longtime fans of Masters of the Universe will also like them also just for what they are. I mean, they're just something fun and different and kind of a neat what if scenario. Now, if posing them in this unpainted style isn't what you imagine, the good news is that Super 7 is planning to release these guys in fully painted styles as well. I mean, you definitely wouldn't tool these brand new sculpts without expecting to release them in other formats. So you can definitely see, the, see these released fully painted down the road. So while we've got them here, we should go ahead and do this. It's comparison time. Here's a look at each one of these characters standing alongside their vintage Mattel counterparts so you can see just how different they all are. And of course, you want to go ahead and fit these guys in with some other 3 and 3 quarter inch vintage style figures. Um, these fit in great with the uh, alien reaction figures that Super 7 did with Funko, or any of the other Funko reaction figures, and of course, any of your vintage 3 and 3 quarter inch figures. So if you've got Star Wars, or Flash Gordon, or Star Trek from Mego, or any of those lines, these are fit in great with your 3 and 3 quarter inch collection. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive prototype set of the Kenner style vintage Masters of the Universe figures from Super 7. Really fun exclusive. I was glad that I was able to pick these up and I'm really looking forward to see what the fully painted ones look like when they get released. These were sold exclusively at San Diego Comic-Con, but you might want to stay tuned to Super 7 in case they do release any of the leftovers online and stay tuned for future releases. Until next time, my friends.